Hey everybody, I got another mask review. Today we're going to look at the new HK KLR goggle system. This is one of two new goggle systems that just appeared on the market along with the Virtue Vio. And like the Virtue Vio, there was much anticipation surrounding the release of this system, so I'm really excited to get a set and take a nice in-depth look at them. When you get the goggles, uh, the box includes the goggles themselves, a uh, manual, uh, a nice microfiber goggle bag, and I'm not sure if this is standard or if it's just because I pre-ordered them, but mine also included a spare lens. Uh, it's actually kind of one of like the fire mirror or whatever it was, spare lenses, uh, which is a nice touch. I don't know if that's standard practice or if it's just because it was a pre-order. So the lens on the HK KLR, as you can see, is a thermal lens, or maybe you can't. And you can see there, you can see the foam, it's thermal lens, so it's not going to fog at all. It's got a nice wide field of view, right? It's not like the, uh, the V-Force Vantage or something that's really tight. The lens change on this mask is quick, easy, and also very secure. It's similar to the i4 system. Basically, you have these little things here. See this little guy right there that catches? So you have the circle, and then you have this little catch behind it, okay? You basically push that down, and then push the whole ear forward. That will allow you to pop out... Uh, this little hinge right here, you can see this piece is hinged, it goes all the way around. You open that up, pop the other side, open up the hinge, lens comes right out. It's a little bit sticky the first couple of times, but it becomes easy very quickly, unlike the Virtue Vio, which was really hard to do without tools out of the box, even after several uh, ins and outs. The breathability on this mask is less than I was expecting it to be. I was expecting a very porous, highly breathable lower on the mask, and you can see it looks like there's a lot of venting in there, but when you look at it from the inside, it's kind of deceptive because those holes are actually pretty small, and the solid portions in between are much, much larger than the vents themselves. You have venting on the sides, but it's angled in such a way that it's not really going to help your breathing. And you also have venting on the cheeks up here, just three little holes on either side. But again, that's not really going to help with the breathability. You're primarily going to be breathing through this center area. So this mask, the breathability isn't bad, but it's not as breathable as a Vio. It's not nearly as breathable as an I4 or a Flex 8, and certainly nowhere near an E-Flex or a Proflex. One unique feature of this mask is that on the top, it has a plastic piece that I've read people are calling a rain cover that was incorporated to keep water out of the lens area if you're playing in the rain. That's an interesting feature, and I don't know of any other mask that includes such a thing, but it has the side effect of blocking the vents on top of the lens. You can see there are those vents under here that are traditionally found on top of the lens that give you some venting, some airflow in above your eyes, and those are blocked by this rain cover piece. Now, I'm told, or rather I've read, that this rain cover piece is removable, but the manual doesn't say how to do it, and I have not been able to figure out how to do it. But presumably you can remove this rain cover and expose those vents to get a little better airflow in the mask. Also, the presence of this rain cover prevents the use of a visor. Now, this mask doesn't come with a visor, and I don't know if HK is planning to release a visor for this mask at any point, but I know people will just kind of mix and match visors and masks. My old i4 had a V-Force Profiler uh, visor on it for a long time. So the fact that these vents are covered kind of prevents one from doing that, even if you plan to use a different visor than the hypothetical future visor for this mask. Now the foam here is, I think, going to be love it or hate it. This foam is very similar to the foam you see on Sly Profits. So it has a very soft layer that's most of the thickness and then very thin around the part that touches your face is almost a felt like layer. It's very soft and very comfortable, but the foam overall has a lot of give to it. It compresses very easily. So it's, uh, like I said, it's very similar to the Sly Foam. And if you like that, you'll probably like this. If you don't like that, you probably won't like this very much. And it's unlike the foam on any other goggles on the market. It's very unique. Another unique aspect uh, to the foam here is in the nose, you can see right here where it kind of goes underneath. I don't know if you'll be able to see this clearly, but the nose actually comes up and over. So instead of the foam sticking out in front, or rather behind the kind of face of the goggles, the nose piece has plastic that comes up over it, and then the foam is kind of underneath. So, that, so that's designed to sit on the bridge of your nose with the foam kind of facing down towards your nose as it comes out from your face. It's similar uh, to the way the Virtue uh, Vio foam is designed around the nose, that it has a little cutout. They accomplished it by actually contouring the foam. 
These guys accomplished a similar thing, which is fitting the foam to your face a little bit better by just kind of guiding the foam into a more unique shape. Uh, compared to the kind of standard just up and around that most goggles use. So that's a unique feature. I'm not sure in the long term if it would be comfortable or not. I could see it because the foam uh, is compressed so easily, uh, actually pressing down so the plastic is on the bridge of your nose in some cases, but the goggles are so light that may not be a problem unless you like use a helmet cam, for instance. So of course, the big question with any new goggle system, or one of the big questions, is the coverage. So let me show you how this stacks up. Okay, so the first thing I want to point out here is that these are really, really tiny. These are smaller than the i4s, okay? So when my mouth is closed, part of my chin, a significant part of my chin, is exposed. Okay, the bottom of my chin is significantly exposed when my mouth is closed because they have a flatter bottom, unlike the i4s that kind of come to a point. On the side, similarly, you can see much of my jawline, my entire jawline is exposed, and much of my cheek is exposed. Down by my mouth, it's pretty bad, and then up here around this little cutout, that's kind of by the corner of my jawbone right here, that's a pretty significant part of my cheek that is exposed. From the front, the sides aren't bad. You're not going to take a shot to the cheek if you're facing someone dead on, but at 45 or 90 degrees, you can definitely take a shot to the side of your face. That would be pretty painful, I think. The ear coverage is good, not great, but it's good. You can see my earlobe is hanging out just a little bit. Your mileage may vary, uh, but the ear coverage is fine in terms of how much it protects. You can see that the forehead coverage is a little bit low. It sits pretty low on the forehead. It doesn't really go up above the foam at all. There's the foam right here. And unlike most goggles, it might stick up a little bit. This one really doesn't. Like I said, it doesn't include a visor, but most people wear a headband or something anyway, so it's really not that big a problem, but just be aware of it. While I have the goggles on, I just want to mention the sound. Because these vents are so small, I'm getting a lot of echo of the sound coming back up into my ears. So when I'm talking, uh, I sound muddled to myself because the sound is bouncing off the front of the mask and coming back into my ears. The hearing for external sounds is fine, it's just my own voice is a little muddled because of the not-so-generous venting in the front. I'm, I don't have someone to test at whatever distance, but I can imagine this would also mean that projection would not be great, again because of these relatively small vents right in front of the mouth. On the subject of protection other than coverage, the ears are a little bit flimsy, I think. The foam they use seems a little bit cheap, and it's you can see it's very thin foam. It's even thinner than like the, the JT foam. It's like the old, old JT foam. It's very thin, uh, and it just feels kind of flimsy and cheap. Part of the ear, this part right here, has like a rubber kind of piece sewn onto it, so that's good, but this lower part does not feel very... I don't know, secure, protective, it just, it feels kind of flimsy. These goggles are a little bit flexible, but not like a ProFlex or an E-Flex. Uh, so let me just show you, like you can kind of press in on that, it's fine, it's kind of like a V-Force grill or something, or a profiler in the middle, and then the sides are kind of like, uh, I guess like die i 4s or something, they're more flexible I think than the Virtue Vio, but it's certainly not on the level of a uh, ProFlex or an E-Flex. One of the big upsides to this mask as it was marketed was the wide range of color options similar to the Virtue Vio. There are tons and tons of very interesting color combinations, solid colors and not solid colors, and there are lots of different parts, you know, the bottom can be one color and the frame and then the little hinge things can be another and the ears and the straps, there's lots of straps. So you have a lot of options as far as colors go, but you can't just like take off the bottom like on the Virtue Vio and put a new bottom on the same frame. I'm sure some of the parts are interchangeable, of course the ears, I think the hinges, but it seems like the bottom and the frame are solidly attached so you can't just swap those out. Another option is the chin strap. It does come with a chin strap which is removable. So this actually attaches by a, a button on either side right there. So you can see here's your here's one side of the chin strap and it just snaps right on just like that. Nice and easy. You can take it off just as easily, no problem. So most people, I guess, don't like chin straps, but it's included, so it's there if you want it. One final thing I want to point out is that in some of the videos with the kind of prototype sets that have been sent out to various teams, the ears were flopping around freely because they had an attachment point up here, but they weren't attached to the face of the goggles at all. That's been remedied in the versions that actually shipped. They put a little screw right here, similar to like the JT screws, 
Uh, so there's the outside and then you can see it's just a little flathead screw on the inside there. And that has solved the problem of the ears flopping around freely. Um, but I feel like that's kind of an improvised solution. It's not through a hole designed for a screw, it's just through the venting. It seems like that was kind of a last minute, oh no, we didn't know this was a problem and now we need to fix it so quick put screws on all the goggles before they get released. Maybe in future runs of the goggles, they will make that kind of a cleaner solution because that does, to some degree, negate the quick disassembly of these goggles. If you can just unsnap everything, but then you have to unscrew it, that takes extra time that I don't think was in the initial design of the goggles. And then of course, price. How much do these goggles cost? Well, these guys, uh, for the very basic black set, are 125 new and then the price goes up according to whatever options, color schemes, you know, whatever kind of mirror lenses you want to include. Uh, so the price will go up from 125 and that puts these pretty much at the pinnacle of the goggle price range, which is what you'd expect for a new high-end goggle system. For that money, I'm not sure I really like these. I mean, they're, the coverage leaves a lot to be desired, the breathability is not great, and the voice projection with the echoey in your mask is not something I really like, and I think they should have addressed that better in the design. But some people, particularly people with smaller heads, might find these very comfortable. They are extremely light, so if you like them, go for it. That's my take on the new HK KLR goggle system. Thanks for watching. See you next time.